So Kara Swisher is on Chris Wallace's show. And um, just if you're joining us, let me remind you again, the choice words that she had to say. And, you know, Chris is like nodding his head. Unbelievable. Greatest asset, the shamelessness of him, is then, then Biden has to get in there very hard and go rapist, racist, fascist over and over and over again. And then the trials are happening at the same time. He's just had to pay. He's just ninety three million dollars right. poor right now and just hammer it in with those three things. Rapist, uh, racist, fascist. And here's the thing. Thank voters- you. That's lovely. I mean, I, I was watching this. Or actually listening to it. I was actually listening to it. See, I listen to all sides. I actually really do. And I think it's important that you hear all sides because you need to know where they're coming from. I was listening to this and I thought, wow, like this is where they're going to go because what else do they got? They're going to go there and then they're going to go to another place, a really dark place, as we heard this member of Congress do just this afternoon. President Biden fully complied with the investigation conducted by Special Counsel Herr, who did not find evidence sufficient to warrant criminal charges. Despite this outcome, Republicans have used the Special Counsel's report to further their longstanding efforts to re-elect, re-elect the former white supremacist in chief, Donald Trump, who faces 40 criminal charges related to the mishandling of classified. Mm-hmm. Let's play it again. Chief Donald Trump who faces 40 criminal, the former white supremacist in chief, Donald Trump, who faces 40 criminal charges related to the mishandling of classified documents. She called him the the former white supremacist in chief. I mean, wow. And then it gets worse because there was this little moment on MSNBC the other night when it turned out that Nikki Haley didn't stand a shot in H-E-double-L, which I told you <laughs> she didn't. I told you Ron DeSantis didn't either. Anyway, they, they're freaking out. Similar to what you see on the Chris Wallace show or Cory Bush. They're, here is MSNBC totally losing it and saying some really wild stuff. And I have a chart that I'm going to show you that's going to explain why they're saying this crazy stuff. But watch. But Republican voters don't vote that way. They don't vote based on economics or based on the benefits they're getting economically from the president. They're increasingly from the Tea Party on. But Republican voters don't vote that way. They don't vote based on economics or based on the benefits they're getting economically from the president. They're increasingly from the Tea Party on. They're voting on race. They're voting on this idea of an invasion of brown people over the border. The idea that they can't get whatever job they want. A black person got it. Therefore, drive all the blacks out of the colleges. Get rid of DEI. That is what they're voting on. They're yeah. just voting specifically on racial animus. Which at this stage, it isn't about economics. No. But <laughs> we got gotcha, you. Okay. We got gotcha, you, Joy. And you see the reason they're doing this? Let me show you. It's because of this. See this chart? I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it for real in the screen. This was put out actually by a guy over at the FT, the Financial Times today. And he says, let's take a look, that American politics are going through this radical sort of racial realignment with non-white voters shifting away from Democrats and towards Republicans. So check this chart out. It's amazing. And look at when it started, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. 2016. Look at how it goes up by 2020. And then look at this one. Woo! Between 2020 and 2024. Isn't that incredible? I mean, I think it's absolutely amazing. And this tells you the whole story, right? So now you understand why you have people like Joy Reid over at MSNBC saying what she was just saying, or the woman in Congress saying what she was just saying, why you have the tech reporter saying what she's saying. I mean, they got to promote something here. So they're going to continue to promote this idea that somehow, you know, Republicans are just really bad people. And that Donald Trump is a really, really bad person. But I think a lot of minorities, I think a lot of black Americans, I think a lot of Hispanic Americans, you know what? People aren't that complicated. They want what is better for them and better for their families. And what they have realized, and by the way, all the data proves this. I've looked at median incomes under both 
the Biden administration and under the Trump administration, and what we see over and over and over again is, in fact, that the, the income, the median income under Donald Trump grew at levels that we hadn't seen in 50 years. So your everyday Americans stood a much better shot under Donald Trump than they stood or stand right now under none other than Joe Biden. And so therein lies a big part of the problem, for sure. I mean, and so they're going to have to try and figure out, like, how do we, how do we deal with this? Like, how do, we, how, do we, how do we correct this? And they're going to try and correct this by telling you that somehow it's all the bad Republicans. Here's another woman on Chris Wallace's show. I want to play this one for you because, again, she's got this idea somehow that again, it, it's the Republicans that are so horrendous. The and wider awful. problem here is that what we see is that Republicans have become an anti immigrant party. Um, when you see the case in Georgia, of course it's a terrible case, of course it's absolutely horrific. But it is not actually emblematic of what happens in most places with migrants. Migrants aren't exactly flooding across the border who are criminals. They're not being let out of mental institutions, as Trump says. This is simply not true. In fact, what we see is that migrants actually commit less crimes um, than their native born. The wider problem here is that what we see is that Republicans have become an anti-immigrant party. So that's what they're going to tell you. Okay, everyone, they they want you to think that you're a bad person if you vote for Donald Trump, that you're voting for fascism, that you're voting for anti-immigration, that you're somehow racist, sexist, you name it. But I don't think people actually buy that. And that's why you're seeing this, this amazing sort of shift in the demographics between the parties, and that's why you're actually seeing all of these polls say, yeah, you know what? I think Trump can do a better job. So now it becomes a situation where as some of you are pointing out, you, you've got to actually make sure it's an even playing field. You've got to have a fair system.